Hello everyone. Welcome to Remote Sensing and GIS for Rural Development NPTEL course. This is week three, lecture one. In the first slide today, I would like to talk about the introduction to geospatial technologies and importance in rural development. But before that, let's look at both week one and week two and how they are linked to week three. This is important because we need to tie the deliverable of each week together and understand the need of remote sensing and GIS. In the previous weeks, we understood the course introduction flow and different sectors for rural development. We looked at the different ministries and how overlap exists. And horizontally, we can integrate between ministries for rural development. We also looked at certain issues and concerns. Now, the issues and concerns, while there are multiple, all need not be solved or well studied using geospatial technologies. So this course will handpick those kind of issues and concerns wherein geospatial technologies can come in and provide solutions. Therefore, we looked at remote sensing as a tool, majorly for water, crop yield, and rural development. Again, we stress the fact that rural development just doesn't mean that water resources are in increased. There is housing, there is schooling, there is infrastructure that needs to also come together, right? And then we went into the introduction of remote sensing and GIS. Very basics, but we did have some introduction. I was also clear that since this course should tie on a GIS and remote sensing introduction. I have given certain courses that students can learn and leverage if they don't have GIS right now. This is a kind of an application of GIS or slightly advanced GIS. So it is better to have both remote sensing and GIS together as an application tool, not as a basic tool. So please brush through the introduction courses for GIS and remote sensing. I have introduced, but if you want in-depth introduction, please go ahead. So in this week three, we'll be looking at certain tools and remote sensing data, open source data, especially from Indian sources. While there are multiple sources, it is important to acknowledge the Indian sources for Indian agencies and Indian rural development. This is because some products are kept focusing on Indian regions within the Indian database. Then we talk about introduction to remote sensing as open source and uh, for, for water, because water ties very, very importantly across the sectors. In 2023, the UN Water Congress will focus on this water as the only resource that ties across all the sustainable development goals, all the 16 of them. So it's, it's not we are over emphasizing on water, but that is the reality. And so we will start with remote sensing tools for water. Then we'll also look into some introduction of remote sensing tools for soil and climate. Again, I will stress mostly on open source data. There is plethora of paid data or proprietary data 
and proprietary software. Uh, but because we want every student to come and participate, we need to keep the playing field level, which means all are invited to take this course. They should not be stopped because they don't have access to a proprietary software or a proprietary data set. So everything that we use here is going to be open source. Then after the introduction to the water vertical, we will look into some data on soil and climate. Again, open source data and housed in the Bhuvan network. Following which, I'll give a short introduction to GIS. There will be a detailed lecture series in the week four. And also a small introduction to QGIS. So of the GIS platforms, we will be discussing more on QGIS as the open source platform for our GIS world. There will be two or three sessions that we record and show you how to do certain exercises for rural development using GIS. So we will go through those, uh, especially um, watershed boundaries and land use land cover and the DEMs. Uh, we need to see how you could quickly do some steps in QGIS and access these data. Again, uh, in my field experience, I have seen many, many um, areas and regions where the basics, the basics for assessing the rural development were missing. For example, if we talk about the rural livelihoods, crop area, watershed management, the watershed boundary is very, very important. However, they did not have the exact boundaries with them, for which GIS helps a lot. You can quickly do it if you know the steps. And those are the aspects that lead to tremendous rural development areas in the near coming future. So let's look into some of it in today's lecture series. So in the next slide, we also wanted to re stress on the fact that data can be used as indicators. So data can be used as an information, correct, to manage the land uh, for rural development, but it can also be used as an indicator. So it captures the baseline conditions and aids for future uh, discussions and scenarios. The underlying goal is the three M's which include measure, monitor, and manage. In the measure, monitor, and manage, you need to set up instruments to measure. Long-time measurement becomes monitoring. And then with measurements and monitoring data, you could do proper management. Some people would convert the three Ms as monitor, model, and then manage. OK, how you manage the multiple tools, you can use models to predict uh, or equations or assumptions, visualizations, but that we'll leave it out for now. The three M's in this case is you measure, you monitor, and then you manage. We also looked about measuring requires installation, data collection, and, uh, and alternates. The alternate data we're going to use is remote sensing data. And the monitoring uh, can also be done for data analysis, data augmentation, and the management is driven by models and data into information. So you convert your data into information, which helps in management. Each rural development sector may need multiple data and information because it is holistic in nature. It is complex in nature. Just using water won't be enough. You need soil, you need temperature, you need management scenarios, land use, land cover. So every commodity, every variable that is important for the stakeholder has to be considered. So this was discussed for water development in the previous slides. However, even to discuss with water, we, need, we claim that we need much more data and we don't have the sources for the data. And for that, remote sensing is the tool. 
I have to emphasize on remote sensing and GIS in even week three because only then you will understand the remaining nine weeks of using remote sensing and GIS. So the first three weeks is kind of introductory, but still now we will jump into uh, the different tools that are available. Uh, the idea is to let you start, go and play on these websites and download data and look at the data, at least visualize the data. We will show you how to visualize the data. Uh, I would like you to start playing with the websites uh, and accessing the data, putting down some issues. Uh, if you find any issues, please uh, send an email on the forum or contact the TA for the course, uh, especially Mr. Pranav, uh, and we will definitely look into it. So we have we do need remote sensing data uh, for augmentation. The first uh, aspect here in the measure, since we don't have installed data, we don't have observed data, we will be using alternative data. And of the alternative data, remote sensing data is key. So let's look into some of the government, uh, especially Indian government data. Open source data uh, is the keyword for today's lecture. Uh, the most predominant agency in this network is ISRO, uh, Indian Space Research Organization. Um, and they have multiple dashboards and portals data archives where remote sensing data is stored. Uh, all of this could be used. Again, that will be itself, it's of course by, by on, on itself, but we will discuss the most predominant ones used for assessing the resources leading to rural development okay so we do have bhuvan we we also have uh, um, vedas okay vedas is also under the isro uh, protocol uh, under is isro's uh, mandates um, you won't see isro everywhere but you do understand that nrsc bhuvan vedas are all sac are all part of isro okay uh, the National Remote Sensing Center, um, Space uh, Application Center, SAC, all these would contribute uh, from ISRO. Okay? ISRO is the major body and under that there are verticals. So you won't see ISRO's name as per se, but it is all under ISRO. Then we have MOSDAC, um, also coming as a very, very important uh, protocol. So all these databases uh, are useful for understanding the resources for rural development, especially water. So today's lecture is on water. Uh, so we will definitely look into all these resources, but Bhuvan is very, very key. I've given you the links here so that you could go and check and see how these work. Uh, but because this course may be rerun, uh, because already we have thousand plus students registered on this course, uh, it, it may be rerun. So for those who are watching it as a rerun episode, uh, please understand that sometimes the links are outdated. Okay. So in those things, just search on your website, Bhuvan Isro or Bhuvan NRSC, and you'll get the updated link. Okay. So this keeps on updating. Any website keeps on updating. And with the updates, the link also changes. So for example, SAC may be newer than NRSC, so you have a different website. So please make sure that uh, if this is a rerun course you're watching, uh, uh, please make sure that if the link doesn't work, uh, do not complain on us. When I put it on, it does work. I do check it. Uh, so your duty is to search for it online and you will definitely find it. So when you click on Bhuvan, uh, it automatically adds the default tags behind the web page, uh, home index.php, and you will come to Bhuvan's portal. So I took it very, very recently. So you could see that uh, G20 is being promoted a lot because 2023, India is the lead for the G20. We are the host um, and organizing uh, country. Uh, so every uh, nation of the, under the G20 will come to India. And you will see how it's prominently placed in ISRO's Bhuvan website. Okay, uh, so it says Indian Geo Platform of ISRO. So basically all the data that ISRO handles for the public 
will be put here for free visualization and free download. Initially, the download was not free, uh, but now it has become more open source. Uh, there's always time taken by the agency to download, assess, and then put it up to open platforms. Uh, we need to be aware of it. It's not like a satellite is capture, capturing data today, tomorrow you will get it. There is a lot of post-processing. There is a lot of algorithms that run behind uh, in the background. So we do need to give it time for it to come to this website. This for natural disasters, hurricanes, cyclones, droughts, floods. Uh, for that, MOSDAC is, is very good. You can see quickly within an hour or so data. Uh, but then the other uh, aspects you mostly see with a data time lag. Okay. So let's look into the uh, dashboard itself. Uh, if you go to the website, you will see most of these uh, different links to click. Uh, Bhuvan 2D, Bhuvan 3D, Bhuvan Light, Open Data Archive, Climate uh, and Environment, and uh, Bhuvanidhi Vista. Uh, here we will be today, since it's going to be on water, uh, we will look at Bhuvan 2D uh, and Open Data Archive. Okay. So uh, both are equally important. Uh, the Bhuvan 3D is more fancier. Uh, Bhuvan Light is for those who cannot have good uh, access to internet. You can use that. But uh, Bhuvan 2D and Open Data Archive uh, are uh, good enough for today's lecture. So uh, let me click on the website so that we could go through um, the Bhuvan portal. Uh, what steps I'll be using, I'll just show here quickly. Uh, we will go to this platform of um, data from Bhuvan. And then there is uh, three categories that have been kept. Uh, satellite sensor category, team and products, program projects. And then under that, we will select data. Okay. So let me share the screen for the new data that we are going to use. Okay, so first let me share the uh, platform. Uh, this is the platform that you will be seeing uh, under the uh, Bowen link. Uh, and then you, as I said, there's multiple uh, different links. We will be clicking on open data archive just to show uh, what we'll be looking at. So in today's lecture, we will be looking at Open Data Archive. The Bhuvan 2D is, uh, first let me introduce Bhuvan 2D before we jump in. Um, it is mostly to look at the map with different terrains. Uh, terrain is the uh, land use, land cover, and elevations, and how you could see like higher elevations of different color, uh, and then hybrid mode with, with satellite image and with some uh, GIS shape files in it. And then there's more where you could see uh, survey data, cadastral maps, hydrological boundaries. Uh, for example, let me say uh, watersheds in India. Uh, it does take time to load, but let me do a basin map. Uh, you can see the blue line coming. Okay, so the Ganges Basin is big. The name comes Ganges Basin, Narmada Basin, etc. You can remove that off, uh, and then all the other maps come. Okay, so uh, and then you have the satellite, just pure satellite and then the base hydrology. Uh, since we are doing water, I just wanted to introduce the base hydrology map. Uh, in the base hydrology map, uh, hydrology is a study on the movement of water, and the key movement of water is the rivers, the streams, etc. So what you see the blue line here is the stream network, okay, rivers and stream network. You can pull the map as pan, and then um, you can zoom in using your mouse or stuff. So if you zoom out, you have the uh, smaller, smaller, um, smaller uh, regions, right? Uh, sm small streams are not visible, but if you zoom in, you could see all the small streams and stuff. Okay, it is not a data for you to uh, go and extract readily. Uh, for that, you have the open data archive. Uh, archive is a place where you put your data. So let me see if we could put uh, a lat long or uh, a city's name. So if I say Pune, 
okay it does ask you where uh, exactly so let's say pune city and then you can see the pune city coming up this is the pune city and the rivers and other things around it you have the bima and other uh, basins around it okay so how the data is collected etc is not clearly given here because this is just as a visualization tool for that we'll go into the open data archive so i'll close this so we had the Bhuvan, uh, and you could see that Bhuvan is also actively involved in the National Hydrology Project, uh, where uh, geospatial hydro products are given, and most or all of it is for rural development, because flood early warnings are needed for uh, creating resilience and uh, adaptation for farmers and rural entities. When a flood comes, you don't see houses washed away in uh, cities as much as it happens in rural villages. A mass number of people have to be evacuated in rural villages, right? So, and most importantly, more of the houses, the land is submerged in water, all the crops are lost. So that is where the uh, impetus comes in, saving the people, right? So let's go to uh, Open Data Archive, okay? And this page opens up. As I said, there are three categories, a satellite sensor, team products, and program projects. Uh, we will go into the first category, right? Let me also share the screen of my presentation where we did uh, see that we will be looking at satellite sensor and theme products, program projects, okay? Uh, today, we will be looking at introducing the Proven um, 2D and Open Data Archive. I have talked about the hydrology part. Uh, now I will talk about the 2D part and uh, open data archive. So here in the open data archive, you have satellites and sensors. When I click the satellite and sensor, what do I see is the different satellites that are launched by India and which is collecting data for public good. You don't see the, uh, the sensitive data here that is not to be shared, uh, which is used for uh, security of the country and all. Uh, so these are more civilian satellites for civilian purposes, right? So you have ocean sat, you have resource sat, as the name suggests, it is for monitoring resources, the list three, LISS three, and then you have the hyperspectral images, uh, and then you have the cartosat, mostly for cartography, which is uh, mostly into the elevation profiles, charting maps, and all those stuff. Then you have a resource sat 2, which is AWIFS. So there are two uh, resource sat platforms, uh, one and two, and then LIS and then AWIFS. And then we have SCATSAT, SCATROMETER. Each satellite carries different sensors. Okay. And based on the sensors, the application varies. So for example, you have hyperspectral images. Those are mostly used for uh, understanding the crop differences, the land use land cover uh, at a very minute scale. Whereas your resource set um, and your uh, uh, AWIFS will mostly for land use land cover, those kind of things. Oceans is for mostly oceans. Uh, there are thermal uh, cameras to monitor the thermal temperature, the water temperature in the oceans, and also across the water bodies. So if you zoom in, zoom out, these two um, pointers you see, I hope you could see my pointer. Uh, let me have uh, the pointer spotlight for you. So you could see here. So normally this part is the map part, and whenever you play with the uh, input here, this is expected to change, okay? So today's lecture, I will go through the uh, dashboard itself. Uh, please uh, see how to understand this dashboard because it's very, very important uh, before we jump into each product, okay? So you have the uh, left, right to just move the map. You can also drag and hold the map will move, okay? Zoom in, zoom out as plus and minus. Okay, and you could, uh, I think maybe because of me sharing, it's not letting me, uh, yeah.
Okay, so now. Okay, so I've refreshed it. Now you could see it moving. So as I said, uh, sometimes it works or gets stuck. Don't worry about it. Uh, just uh, you could see that if I move my hand uh, and then hold the mouse and then drag it, you can drag. It. Okay, here you don't see a, a place where you could uh, quickly access the data. You will need to log in. Okay, so if you can see here, uh, there is a login option. Uh, I am going to use my spotlight again so that you could see. So you could see here there is a login option where you will need to create a username, create a login password and do it. When you create it, please mention it is for academic, you're a student, those kind of things will be asked because they want to know what you're going to use the data for. Is it for commercial? Uh, is it for public, uh, just for uh, knowledge and research? Or are you a student who is working on a thesis, dissertation, etc.? NGOs also use, so they use it sometimes for free uh, work, or also there are companies that use it for commercial value. So ISRO needs to be careful about how many people are using it for what costs. So that is where you have it. Uh, the boundaries are more accurate here. So please use these boundaries for anything that you use for Indian regions. Uh, these boundaries are very, very accurate because it is from the government of India. So you could uh, go to your login. I do have a login profile. Next time, the next class, uh, I will start with my login. Uh, but today, I will not get into that. We will get into this part. Okay. So you have dragged and moved. Now, there's Google Store tools, updates, download list, etc. So you can play with those. Uh, so as I said, the satellite and sensor differs. So based on the satellite, you can do it. If you want to read about it, let's say resource set, you just click the resource set and then the map updates by itself. Each tile is what you buy data. Okay. So that box that you see, the line that you see, uh, that is what you buy data for. Okay, so for example, the grid will come based on your internet speed. So make sure that uh, for me, it might come faster, for others may be slower. So just wait, it will come. Okay, so you see the grid box and that is the bounding box uh, you can have here as your study area to download the data. Okay, so to learn about this, I'm just gonna show one satellite. You can learn about others similarly. You can actually click the brochure. The brochure is a very simple uh, for everyone to use a booklet which tells you about the sensor. So this is the satellite, okay? And the sensor that has been used, uh, what is the payload, data handling, uh, how to download the data, all these are very, very important, okay? So you can see the schematic of the satellite itself. Uh, what are the specifics of the satellite? Okay, when was it launched? Uh, what are the resolutions, 5.8 meters, etc. Remember, we talked about spatial and temporal resolution. So those are the two very, very important uh, factors that are needed. And then how, how much heavy it is, uh, temperature, battery, everything. Okay, so this is not part of the course, but at least when you use it, you should know uh, what are the, what is the satellite and how to get the information regarding the satellite. For example, if a student is using it for their thesis, uh, you could go here and take all the data, the metadata related to the satellite, where they pro uh, procured the instruments that went into the data, the data dissemination, etc. Okay, that is a brochure. Uh, and then there is a handbook, user's handbook, how to use the data. Okay, uh, so that is also available uh, as a different uh, book. So you can go and look at the scope, uh, when it was done, how it is done. What are the different data that comes in? How is the data schematic? Everything, okay? And then the uh, auto -ret rectification process. So uh, some data has uh, issues because of leakages and data sharing, etc. So it is important to understand uh, the errors and what algorithms they use to uh, eradicate those errors. So if you click that, you will get this part. Okay, so how do you uh, eradicate what type of images, uh, what type of errors that come? All these are given here. 
okay the orbit cycle inclination of the uh, satellite number of days repetitivity 24 days so which means spatially resolution uh, is at um, they i think they mentioned at uh, 10 meters 220 meters etc uh, but then most important the repetitivity is 24 this is the temporal scale okay so here it is the resolution is also 23.5 meters uh, so each band also differs uh, spatially because of the camera and where it was built. Uh, so here's 23.5 meters is the spatial resolution. I said 20, so it's around 23.5. Uh, whereas you are uh, 24 days, once in 24 days, it comes to the same location. So that is the uh, temporal resolution. Okay, so now we have looked at the uh, different technical documents. And uh, now you can do a bounding box. You can select if you don't know the lat longs of the study area you want, which you can put here. Uh, you can also type in, as I did, Pune and uh, Pune or Mumbai. Let me see if it comes up. Okay. Um, Pune doesn't come up. So you can actually put a lat long here. Or if you don't know, you can actually select. Okay. I think it doesn't like the uh, pointer, that's why it's not working. So you can put here uh, lat long, min lat long, or you can take the map sheet code. Uh, so those who know about map sheets, on on bottom of the map, there is a sheet number. You can take the map sheets. Okay, so now the Pune is loading. So I type Pune, so you can, it is loading now. It does take some time. So let's say Pune, Maharashtra, and then you get it. So, so when you use this, just wait for a long time. It does work. Okay. Tiles is, is click start button for selecting the tiles. So these are the tiles, which when you download, you download the data by tiles. If you say India, not all India will come out. You will have to download the data as tiles. Okay. So I'm just going to click start button and then click here. So you see the tile has been selected. Now I can download the data. Okay. I can do stop and interactive drawing is also you can select different um, start so you can see i'm going to draw like this very crazily and then i double click all the tiles that i select will be there okay so even if a little bit it goes into the tile it will be selected now i can download the data remember that only download the data that you your study area is going to be used so that is the important part. The first part of all satellite data analysis is to identify your study area and only download the data for your study area. If you download all the data, then your computer is going to be suffering with uh, too much data coming in. It is going to get slow on the GIS platform. Avoid it. Initially, those days, yes, we had to download all and then discard the unwanted data. But now they are giving you the... Um, the benefit uh, you can clear and then let's do it again so you are given the benefit just click on one what tile you want so as i said pune is what i want so i'm just going to click pune that's it that's enough and then you stop okay uh, and put your boundary on also you can take okay good so now this is next you can see that the data uh, if you click on next you can actually see what you want to what you have downloaded okay so this is the the satellite data uh, that we down we if we download we will get for that particular time okay so this is the thumbnail wheel and the metadata is data about the data so if you click that all the relevant data information will be coming okay this is very important for students to cover uh, especially on what was the uh, locations the, the datum um, the projection the coordinate system um, and then what, what was the rect rectification done? It was auto-rectified, uh, the resolutions, um, spatial resolution unit. Uh, so it's degrees, okay? So what was the file format, everything. When you download this data, it is automatically georeferenced, which means it goes directly into QGIS on Pune, okay? So in other terms, you have to download and then attach the Pune location to it. Here, the Pune location is already embedded in the data. Okay. Good. So all all the tiles that you want, you can do. And this is the time. As I said, twenty four days. Once it takes, 
uh, sometimes you can get earlier days also uh, and then you can the, just click 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 and then view it will pop up so you can see how the data is differing uh, as per the time time sequence okay and whatever you want only that you can select and then you download you don't have to download all the tiles so, so the tile is the same okay but here what changes is your uh, time the time of when the data was taken changes so i'm going to stop here for the time uh, and uh, i'm going to go back quickly to the uh, presentation and in the presentation we have just concluded today's presentation as indian remote sensing data exist uh, please go and look into the tutorials so this initially i give you the link for the data set now i'm giving you the uh, link to go and look at the tutorials okay so please go ahead and look at the tutorials you will find it very very uh, helpful uh, especially uh, each tutorial is crafted for Bhuvan, Vedas and Mosdaq. Uh, if the dot doesn't help, um, please uh, please uh, make sure that you uh, have uh, access to the link for YouTube. Okay, so that is very important because uh, you you will need to use this for your entire project. Okay. So as I said, if there's any questions on uh, using these tools and uh, making um, your project, uh, please don't uh, feel shy to uh, request. Um, I'll reshare the slide again, the conclusion slide. Uh, and if, if it doesn't work with the dot cube, you can use these links, okay? So good, uh, thanks for uh, staying a little bit longer today's class because of the um, portal. Uh, in the next class, I will go in only for water and we'll discuss that lecture. Thank you.